Chapter 8. A Citizen's Homeland Security Association's Organizational Mission and Structure. This chapter is rather long, so we're going to break it into two parts. First, we'll cover the mission of CHSAs, and next time we'll go over the structure. Inasmuch as formation and operation of CHSAs for a revitalization of the militia of the several states comprises a novel and necessarily experimental program, no hard and fast directives as to what should be done can be offered in detail here. Nonetheless, certain general principles stand out, first and foremost with respect to a CHSA's organizational mission and structure. A. A CHSA's mission. Basically, the mission of each CHSA will be the following. 1. To organize a group of concerned and knowledgeable citizens in a particular locality, in a particular state. 2. To study in detail the problems of homeland security peculiar to that locality and state, particularly those problems that the state's existing military, law enforcement, emergency response and management, and related agencies are insufficient to address. 3. To ascertain how the militia of the several states, revitalized in that state, could solve, alleviate, or mitigate those problems. 4. To determine the best manner of actually revitalizing the militia in that state, according to the principles of pre-constitutional colonial and state militia, as applied to contemporary conditions. 5. To assist in drafting one or more proposed statutes for that purpose, and to submit those bills to the state's legislature for consideration. And 6. To encourage citizens from all walks of life in the state to support the passage of those bills, and then to volunteer for service in the revitalized militia when the statutes are enacted into law. In the pursuit and in hopes of the fulfillment of this mission, each CHSA must embody and exemplify in all its endeavors a steadfast fealty and outspoken commitment to the moral, political, legal, economic, and social principles that animate the militia of the several states. This entails its members' adherence to the tenets of national identity, integrity, and independence that the several states, both individually and collectively, in their more perfect union as the United States of America, have assumed among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, and may do all acts and things which independent states may of right do. It entails its members' recognition that every American's economic prosperity demands maintenance of the institutions of private property, which depends upon individual liberty, which requires limited government which can only exist under constitutionalism, which takes its specific form in the Constitution. It entails its members' acceptance of we the people's salient position, authority, and especially responsibilities in the constitutional structure, namely, that first, as the embodiment, mind, heart, and voice of each of the several states, and of the nation as a whole, we the people constitute America's sole earthly repository and executors of legal and moral sovereignty, and wield supreme political power. Second, we the people derive our own political authority from the laws of nature and of nature's God, and perforce of this authority can delegate and have delegated only just powers to our institutions of government. Third, because in the final analysis the actual effective execution of all political power grows out of the barrel of a gun, and because the clause, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, expresses the practical link between raw political power and rightful political authority, we the people must always control the gun, and never allow the gun in someone else's hand to control us. And fourth, because an armed people constitute the only true and lasting homeland security in a free state under a republican form of government, the right of the people to keep and bear arms must not be infringed. And to secure our enjoyment and make effective our exercise of that right, we the people must organize, arm, discipline, and train ourselves in the militia of the several states whenever public officials neglect, 
fail, or refuse to do so. Finally, it entails inculcation in every member's mind of an unshakable belief in both one, the importance of the militia of the several states to the survival of constitutional government in this country, that a well-regulated militia truly is necessary to the security of a free state and the maintenance of a republican form of government, and two, the ability of common Americans to revitalize the militia by statute, or, if the time proves too short for that, to weather whatever terrible storms are approaching this nation, by ourselves assuming the powers and duties of the militia on our own recognizance.